What is something shocking you found out about a friend or family member after they died? This isn't shocking. More cute. My granddad was a farmer his whole life. Ever animal loved him. We'd go to a new place and dogs would be coming straight to him. Horses would cuddle with him. He just had a charm with them. When cleaning out his closet and digging in his pockets to make sure nothing of value was thrown in the wash, we found grains, bits of dried meats, dog treats, bits of old carrot. For the horses, man's been bribing animals with food all this is life. Four years ago my dad passed away in an accident. It totally broke my mom and siblings. He and I never really got along, so I was sad, but didn't take it nearly as hard as my family. A year after he passed my mom gave me his old desktop. When my computer died, I found out that he'd been cheating on my mom for years. When I stumbled onto the folder where he saved every chat log, picture, video, etc. Most of them were only online, but he met up with one woman while he was out of town for work. I've never told my family and don't think I ever will. Yeah, that's the kind of secret that is best to not share, because it's only going to do harm. The only reasons I would share a secret like that is if someone, you mom for example, was going to take some action, that would be inappropriate in light of the infidelity. Or if you found out there were previously unknown children, that might try to lay a claim to your father's estate. I took care of my dad before he passed, and also handled his finances afterwards. I'm the youngest of four. Come to find out my parents were divorced well, before I would have been conceived. That plus the fact, that I have blonde hair and blue eyes and all my siblings have dark hair and brown eyes, pretty much got the ball rolling, and I started to ask questions of my mother and other family members. Mom initially denied it, but after I came back with ancestry results showing another man was my biological father, she came clean. I found this all out when I asked my father about the history of mental illness in our family. When I was diagnosed bipolar last year, he said we had none. But my aunt said, don't you remember when mom went away? My dad and aunts didn't know what had happened exactly. My oldest aunt, let's call her Mary she would have been 12 or so then, remembers the most. And said it started when grandma had come home from work. When they were making berry smoothies in a blender and grandma was convinced that it was my toddler uncle's brains in the blender. Despite him sitting there in the kitchen with them, alive and well. She started screaming at them about how evil they were, and shaking him, and trying to get him to wake up, even though he was crying and screaming. At some point she grabbed a knife, and was chasing them with it. Mary somehow got all the little ones, and went to a neighbor's a ways down the road, middle of the country, until their dad came home. Mary met him at the driveway, and explained what happened, and he told her to stay at the neighbor's, until he came back. They were there a few days when someone from the state came and got them. My dad and the two older girls were put in foster care and the two younger ones went to some family. Almost a year went by and then, one day, they were all brought back together and given back to grandma, who they hadn't heard from the entire time. But their dad was just gone. Turns out after he put her away, he just moved away and left them all. She refused to talk about what happened, and they all eventually found out through another family member. My wife's dad passed away over 10 years ago. Growing up she had two half-brothers. Her mom had been married twice, before she married my wife's dad. Last year during all the initial covered lockdown she decided to finally go through all the family photos that she had gotten from her parents over the years. Her mom was moved into a memory care unit for dementia a couple of years ago. She's identifying family members and reaching out to them on Facebook offering them copies of photos they are in if they want them. But there's one picture of her and a boy who appears to be a couple of years older that she can't identify. So she starts asking the various relatives that she's contacted. One of them tells her that he's her half-brother, a half-brother she had no idea that she had until that very moment, when she instantly remembered a comment her dad had made when she was very very young. Turns out he lives 20 minutes away from us. She found him on Facebook and reached out to him. They spent several days texting back and forth. Turns out his mother wanted nothing to do with my wife's dad after they were divorced and didn't want him around his son. Rather than fight her, my wife's dad just stopped seeing his boy. After corresponding for a couple of weeks, he and his son stopped by our house to say hello. We all get along very well. He and I text pretty often. 
because we both have ordered Broncos that we are waiting for. My wife and him text at least weekly as well. We've been out to dinner with them and are talking about going on a trip together soon. Created a throwaway for this when I was 16. My mother and I were living in poverty, the lease on our home was coming up, and wasn't going to be renewed, the new landlords wanted to make some desperately needed repairs on the house, as it had never once passed a single inspection from the day we moved in, we had nowhere else to go, out of the blue, my mother's uncle, my great uncle, showed up and offered to let us come live with him, he'd been my mother's favorite uncle, when she was growing up, but they lost touch, before I was even born, it turns out, he lived only a few short hours away, and was in need of some live-in help. His health was bad, and deteriorating. My mother took care of him, driving him to doctor's appointments, helping him after surgeries, etc. For years, she did this, and in return he took care of not only her, but me and even some friends of mine. He and my mother were the kindest, most generous souls I'd ever met, and for the longest time, I told everyone he was like the father I never had. He died right after Christmas some 14 years later, within a week of my 30th birthday, as it happened. He went into the hospital on my birthday, and less than a week later he was gone. It was one surgery too many, and he didn't have the strength to pull through. I stayed with my mother for, as long as I could, trying to help her figure out what her next steps would be. He'd had a will leaving her everything, his house, his bank accounts, all of it, but the will was gone. No one knew where it went. We searched high and low, but never found it. What I did find, however, was a marriage certificate. My mother was married to her uncle and had been for over a decade. You see, he went into the hospital for surgery one day, and in the process, the doctors realized he'd need a second surgery. Instead of keeping him under, they had to let him come out of it and become coherent enough to consent to the second surgery. As his niece, my mother didn't have a say in that. Why not simply make her power of attorney? He had amazing health insurance and retirement. By becoming his wife, she was able to be put on his health insurance. She was getting older. They were roughly a decade apart in age and needed healthcare, dental, and vision. She was also the beneficiary of his life insurance after his death, as well as his social security and veterans benefits, thus ensuring that she was taken care of long. After he passed, I was never able to call him my stepfather in life, because I never knew. My mother was always afraid I wouldn't understand, or that I'd judge. Their relationship wasn't physical. My mother is a CSA survivor, and is repulsed by sex, and his health was too poor and his medications too severe for him to be able to do anything of the sort. I understand why they didn't tell me, because I hesitate to tell other people. It's not a dark secret or anything I'm ashamed of, because I knew the nature of their relationship wasn't like that. But it's definitely something that requires explanation and it's hard to tell how someone's going to take it. Went to a friend, ah, from college's funeral about a month ago, he passed young, early 30s and had a wife and three small kids with the youngest two being twins born early this year. We were close in school, but only casually kept touch over the years, so I had only met his wife, a, a few times. I get to the funeral, and was surprised how well she seemed to be holding it together, but figured everyone handles grief differently. I offer my condolences, and then end up chatting with a few other college friends after the service. A comes up to the group to let us know that we are invited to go have a drink with her and a few others. If we want as her parents are watching her girls for her, I was going to decline until she states she really wants all of us to join because she needs to let us all know what she found out over the last week while going through our things to try and get her and the girl's life organized. Apparently the reason she wasn't very upset was because R had been leading a double life for the past 13 plus years. He had always claimed his dad had owned a trucking company and then sold it leaving him really well off based on his spending habits. This all seemed true. He also had claimed his mom passed while we were in school that he was an only child. After he left the college I attended during our sophomore year, he would post pictures of Vanderbilt and claimed he transferred there to finish school. He also said he got a master's from a different prestigious school. I had worked with him briefly a few years ago in a professional capacity when his company reached out to possibly work with my company so, based on his role there, all of that totally sounded like it could be true. 
turns out none of it was. His mom and sister attended the funeral. The mom all of us, including his wife, thought had died when we were in college and the sister none of us knew existed. She had no idea he told people she was dead. She thought R and A eloped, and with her living out of state, R would make up excused why he didn't visit. When he did, R had also told us his sister was his cousin. So we were all shocked by that too. R even went so far as to show an obituary of his dead mom when they were dating, or thought the whole time that his actual mom was his aunt and that his sister was his cousin. The school stuff was also all BS. He apparently transferred to an online school and got a bachelor's but would send us pictures from Vanderbilt's campus. The trucking company his dad owned was real but actually went bankrupt and was liquidated. The trust fund he told A that he set up for the girls doesn't exist. He had told A he didn't have students loans but actually had dollar sign 78k still. He had maximumed out multiple credit cards she didn't know existed and on top of all of this. He was cheating on A with multiple other women, taking them for fancy dinners, to the casino, getting hotel rooms for them. Needless to say, A was livid, and she was very happy to find out she wasn't the only one A had been lying to all these years. The whole thing seriously felt like a movie. I didn't realize stories like this actually happened in real life. I'm still sad my friend passed as he seemed like a friendly good guy in the time I knew him. But I also realize many of us never met the real him. Now the rest of us are doing what we can to help A and his girls.